we're all here. It is 8.30. Uh, I don't, I mean, we're all in our houses. There is no flag. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't we uh, wave the pledge for today? I don't particularly like pledging to a wall or TV or anything like that. So um, we'll, we'll skip that for now. Um, so uh, why don't we move on to... Um, why don't we move on to comments? Um, you know, I didn't, I, I wasn't uh, prepared really to make a, a bunch of comments. Scott or Matt? Well, Carl, you have um, Eversource Vegetation Management on here, and, and I happened to run into somebody this past weekend who asked me about Phragmites and, uh, wow. and any attention being, being, uh, <laughs> Directed toward Phragmites, so I wonder if those may be. There's nothing uh, but one, two, two, two different, very different. No topics. correlation. Okay, so well, I'll follow up on that a little bit later on when I know more about it. But I just, it was yeah, just, I mean, just out off the cuff. No, um, no. Uh, so very simply, I mean, vegetation management is obviously they're pruning trees. Uh, you know, they try to. Unfortunately, sometimes they remove the canopy a little bit. Um, and uh, remember, they did that out on 154 in front of the transfer station several years ago. And people were, you know, not particularly happy, but people aren't particularly happy when they lose power either. So um, they send that to me usually. Uh, looks like they're going to come down Main Street. And I did comment back to them saying, hey, before you do a lot of stuff on Main Street. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about what you're going to do. Uh, people are very sensitive to uh, what's going on on Main Street and our canopy there. Phragmites is invasive, Scott. Uh, and there are several projects all over town being done with invasives. Um, so, for instance, between North Cove, uh, Cromwell Place, and uh, our, our, our land in uh, um, Gardner's, like Gardner's and uh, Saybrook Monument Park. Uh, there's a big project going on there, privately funded, but some of it involves town land. And I've given permission for the folks who are privately funding that to go on town land and remove the Phragmites. There's also another large project going on uh, at the end of like Coulter, uh, with the sheltered cove condos in there, uh, as you get to the uh, Founders Park in there, uh, we are contributing to that a little bit. Uh, the town is, but uh, a lot of that is being paid for with private funding. And when you get rid of the Phragmites, a lot of the native grasses come back, uh, and the birds come back, and more wildlife comes back. So um, the problem with Phragmites is it's, I think they call it a tubular growth, I think. And what that means is you can cut it, but the roots beneath it go parallel to the ground in, you know, 20, 30 feet. So um, it takes years and years of treatment to actually kill the Phragmites. And if you don't have all the surrounding properties uh, consent and landowners consent, it can easily come back if it's not really stayed on top of. Uh, there were, you know, just so you guys know, uh, with regard to invasives on Founders Park, um, now that we're, I'm, I'm a little bit on the topic, Founders Park, you know, we're smothering. That is part of our invasives program that uh, Kathy Connolly, Lynette Wacker, and the Conservation Commission is very involved in to get rid of some of the mugwort and some of the other invasives. It's not just mugwort and we're smothering it over there. And some of the people in Sheltered Cove, well, one or two, have raised a concern with me that it's unsightly. Um, yeah, so I did visit a property owner over there and went over and I, I met with them, I talked with them. I brought their concerns back to Lynette and Kathy and Christine Picklow. I did respond to them in a letter saying that it's probably going to be another nine months of that. So it'll be a full year, essentially, of the smothering. And then we hope to plant native grasses there and see how that goes. So, you know, I 
I, I recognize your concerns, but this is the way we're handling it at the moment. So, uh, all right, two very different things. Carl, question on that? Like approximately how much of the invasive budget that we put aside and that off account is like treating like Coulter Park take up? Uh, Founders Park. Or Founders Park, yeah, thank you. Um, not a lot, actually. Uh, a lot of that. So the plastic was given to us by Deep River Public Works. Okay. Did, Public Works did the the project. So yeah, actually, Matt, that project is costing us next to nothing. It's some of the right. other some of the other projects where you hire all Habitat. They seem to be the company that everybody is using to get rid of Phragmites. Uh, mm. It's called all Habitat. I have agreed here and there, like for instance, um, there's another project, uh, part of the project going down at um, Fort Monument Park. We're paying all habitat um, for some of, they actually have to mow it and then mm -hmm. they, they treat it. So we're paying for some of the mowing. I figure it's our, our land, property owners are contributing quite a bit. So we've probably spent, uh, if we have 75, if we had 75,000, we probably spent about 20 or so towards contributions. Okay. So there's still okay. money. There. Lynette Wacker did bring up to me uh, that when they go to plant native grasses in the fall, where will that come from? I said, it should come from the invasives line item. I said, there's no reason it shouldn't uh, mm -hmm. come from that. Uh, it's all part of the same project. So we'll see how that project goes. We'll see how it looks when they uncover the... Um, when they uncover the plastic. Okay. Um, so, uh, Scott, anything else? No, but thank you very much. That was, that was helpful. Yeah. It's a long winded certainly, but, um, yeah, a lot, a lot. Look at the Phragmites are everywhere where there's just no way we could get a, get a hold of all the Phragmites in town. We can't, um, it's all over the shoreline. Uh, you know, interestingly, uh, it supposedly they grow in brackish waters. Oh, they don't grow in salt water exclusively. Um, so there's some areas where they've actually opened up channels, so more salt water comes in. Supposedly kills the Phragmites, but it's all over town and it's horrible. Um, they're not that bad to look at, kinda, but they do choke off a lot of the native vegetation and they uh, do get rid of some of the native species uh, who can't really access the ground anymore. So one of those things, uh, you know, I ended up knowing probably a little bit more than I ever expected to know about. So anyway, um, uh, Matt, anything in particular on this? No, I know we have, I know we have a lot with the, uh, with the budget. Yeah. So. yeah, thanks. And I have, I do have a board of directors meeting um, yep. after this with the Mirror Dissolution Authority. So uh, again, um, let's go to comments from the public. I see Bruce and Deborah on the line. If either one of you wishes to speak, you can raise your hand. And if not, we'll move on. Thank you. Um, approval of the minutes. Uh, I'll make I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from looks like January twenty third. Is there a second? Second. Second by Scott. Um, any comments or questions? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Thank you. So let me just make a note here. Um. Uh, all right. Um, all right. So uh, we're on to business before the board, item 6A. Uh, discussion and action plan. Just before we get there, uh, as you guys know, given the timing of this storm, I did close town hall today. Uh, really, the, the brunt of the storm is going to hit between, you know, like now and two o'clock. And you know, to require anybody who can't really walk to work to drive to work, probably not the best idea. Um, you know, uh, 
anybody anybody coming from out of town, not that we have a ton of out of town employees, but some of our workers do. Um, it just didn't seem right. And not only that, Public Works has to clear the parking lot. And uh, so for the moment, I just thought it was best um, to close Town Hall to regular business today. Hopefully there won't be anybody terribly disappointed by that. Uh, any members of the public, I hope. I will go in later on this afternoon to check messages. And if people do need anything, um, I'll certainly uh, give them a call back and see. Usually what happens is people will call and say their road didn't get plowed or something along those lines. And I'll tell Billy if there's any mailboxes down, I'll tell Bill. Um, so, um, all right, uh, Public Works uh, Capital Plan, as you know, um, this is something that we talked about at uh, at the Board of Finance meeting. It's uh, what we're trying to do is get Bill Claffey to be able to order the trucks and the skid steer uh, prior to the budget referendum. Um, because even though the budget referendum's in May, he would not technically be able to order until July. You know, that's when the new fiscal year begins. So uh, this gives him a little bit of a head start to get those trucks, hopefully in time for next winter, um, maybe. Um, he's very excited about the skid steer in particular. He just thinks it's a multi-purpose tool uh, that he'll be able to use for many, many different items. Um, it looks like also that we've filled all our hiring postings, uh, and this does uh, refer to public works a little bit. We just hired someone this week to fill our last position at the transfer station. And it looks like we interviewed someone yesterday for a maintainer two position that's vacant. That um, also looks very capable. Uh, you know, I think Leanne and I were talking about this. We are starting to see a few more applicants for all our jobs, which is good. Um, not that we have a ton open, but we do have someone leaving the town clerk's office uh, in a part-time role, 27 hours. And we hired, we interviewed two people yesterday. One of them seems to be very qualified. So it's good that we're seeing a little bit of slack in, I would say, in the workforce so that we can uh, get some good hires on. Um, so anyway, this public works capital plan, in this year's budget, uh, I'm proposing to increase the 85,000 a year that we put away to 100,000. Um, if we were to take that up 10,000 a year um, to 125,000, I think that would be plenty enough and very sustainable uh, that we'd probably be paying off all our heavy public works equipment within five years by borrowing from ourselves. Um, in addition to that, if we do have surpluses that are uh, on the larger side, we can always um, throw some money at this to decrease the amount of debt that we will be paying and pay ourselves back faster. So um, what we're proposing here is about $600,000 worth of equipment, two trucks and a skid steer. Uh, you know, even if we just did $100,000, you are looking at a six-year payback, but I think we'll be able to make that probably three to four uh, by the time we're done with it. So, um, is there, uh, well, I'm going to move that we, uh, take action on the public works capital plan for discussion purposes. I'll second. second. All right. Seconded by Matt at that time. Um, so it's been moved and seconded. So I've talked enough already. Um, this was taken up at the board of finance before. So is, uh, Comments? I mean, we've covered this at the board of fine, the joint board of board of finance board of selectmen meeting. Mm -hmm. So I feel like um, I've been part of the conversation the entire time. Um, it makes sense. I just just more for memory's sake, uh, are we able to surplus the existing trucks or and and get some sort of revenue for that? Yeah, actually, we there there's at least three pieces of equipment that we will be able to get revenue for uh, probably two trucks, which um, Bill's not sure with the value of that, but also the, uh, the, the mower that you, goes on the side of the road, he's going to get rid of that too. Um, 
he figures he probably has 60 to 80, maybe 60 to $100,000 worth of surplus equipment. And what we've done in the past is we've taken that revenue and we've classified that, and Leanne, correct me if I'm wrong, under miscellaneous revenue. And what we're proposing, and we'll propose this, we'll mention it to the Board of Finance too, is instead of it going to miscellaneous revenue, that it go back towards paying down this equipment. And even just with that and a little bit of surplus money, you're talking about a three or four year payback on this new equipment. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's unfortunate our fleet is this old and it is something I've I talked to Larry Bonin about over the years. Uh, this is not meant as criticism again it's just it's it is a conversation i had with larry and larry liked his trucks he thought they worked well he liked the the fuel that they ran on he had he felt he had criticism of the new technology on the new trucks he felt they were going to be harder to service more expensive to service um we have a new public works director he is very much in favor of replacing these trucks that are 30 years old which seems ridiculous. Um, you can't tell me these trucks are going to run much longer or be effective or, or be safe or be comfortable. I mean, you know, when you have guys who are plowing overnight, thankfully today is a daytime storm, but they'll be working into the night. Um, you want a safe, comfortable truck. And that's super important uh, in my opinion. So, um, so we're going to start a capital plan to start doing this and we'll take a look at it again next year and in the year after. So Scott, any comments? No comments. Okay. So uh, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Um, if you guys don't mind, why don't we skip to number D, item 6D, letter D. Uh, that would be call of a special town meeting. It is a one item town meeting. And it deals exactly with this. So I'm going to move the special town meeting agenda. You guys have seen that, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's just one item and it's um, these trucks. So I'm going to move that as their second. Second. Um, any discussion on the town meeting? It'll happen at our next Board of Selectmen meeting, which is in two weeks. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Um, all right. <clears throat> Let's move on to the budget. All right. Um, all right. So why let me just um get my agenda here. All right, I'm gonna uh for conversation purposes and because it's the, that time of year. I'm going to move the Board of Selectmen budget for FY25. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All right. So we are in discussion. Um, I am not going to go through the memo. I'm not going to. Um, hold on one second. Uh, in its entirety, um, the budget is up 2.3. There is a reference on page two that it's up 2.4, but that uh, was prior to the uh, uh, police budget being reduced, uh, as the chief of police noted um, at the Board of Finance meeting last Tuesday. So it looks like it's up 2.31 um, in total, which, quite frankly, I'm not unhappy with, given some of the increases in funding that we've increased and decreased this year, especially on the revenue side. Um, and we can go through some of those changes. Uh, so you see that the Board of Ed budget is up over 900,000. Um, that of course is a big driver to the budget. Um, and uh, let's see, um, what I'd like to talk about is, um, the debt service is decreasing significantly in fiscal 25, as you guys both know, we've yeah. talked about that in the past. Um, one of the things that I think we should all be reasonably proud of is uh, that we are fully funding our pension obligation at this point. 
uh, the actuarially determined employer contribution, um, ADEC, they call it now. They've called it a variety of things over the years. Leanne is very aware of that, but they're calling it ADEC now. Um, so some of the changes that we've made in this budget are um, increasing the amount to the Public Works Equipment Reserve Fund, as previously mentioned, to 100,000 from 85,000. So that is money that will be dedicated towards paying uh, for large equipment. I'm increasing the amount of legal services by 20,000 from 105 to $125,000 per year to cover legal costs. As um, I think it is public information. Mike Cronin, the town attorney is uh, retiring. And uh, so we will be using new counsel. I am uh, at this point uh, directing our boards and commissions to use Bertram Moses. Um, uh, the police commission is already using them. Uh, I am starting to use them. Land use is starting to use them for certain boards and commissions. Uh, Matt Willis at Halloran and Sage is um, representing the Zoning Commission and the Inland Wetlands Commission, and he will continue to do so. I do anticipate that the rates we pay will be higher than what Mike Cronin charged. So um, I'm anticipating that we will not only have to raise our legal fees budget uh, this coming year in 25, but probably also in 26. Uh, the wow, Chris, can I can I ask a question on that? Of course you may. Thank you. Um, with the town attorney, if memory serves me right, don't we normally appoint that position? We do. Um, yeah, we do. So we'll do that. I'm sorry. Okay. Right. Yeah, I was just wondering. Yeah, thank you. We haven't done that. So, uh, so Mike Cronin did ask me not to take, he, he basically said, look, while I'm in this period of time, I prefer if you didn't appoint me or didn't appoint someone else while I, you know, so he still is working. So what I'll do is I'll make a note, Matt, that on our next agenda, we'll appoint an, a town attorney. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. Actually, thank you for uh, bringing that up. Um, uh, because that is something that we normally do. So, um, yeah, the police, you, you guys have heard about the police department. I'm on page four of the budget memorandum. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've had several years of experience with our street lights, um, and we feel very comfortable reducing that line item by $15,000. Um, just 30 seconds on that. We used to pay $150,000 to Eversource every year um, for as long as I can recall. We bought our streetlights about five years ago, maybe six years ago at this point, seven years ago. I don't remember. Um, that was about a $450,000 investment, uh, but we are saving $100,000 a year. I mean, we just are. So the return on investment on that was about four years, and we've already probably paid that ROI back. Um, and uh, so we're re reducing that. The LED streetlights do fail. Um, we get a call probably once a month for streetlights that are out. Uh, we have Majestic Electric, which is Sal Asso. He goes right out and he fixes them. And not a big deal. Um, each each fix is probably three to $400 with labor and material. Um, and we feel that budget is in good shape. Um, we also feel that we can reduce the town hall maintenance. We had originally increased it in the budget, and now we've just kept it level. Uh, you guys hear a lot about our water bill and Leanne and I are very diligent about staying on top of those increases because when you fall behind, it can get significant. But we sat down in the last week or so and we looked at where we are and where we budgeted and we feel we have a little bit of room in there to, um, even with a an increase. Um, their increases come in January they come at different points during the year. So we feel very comfortable with the number that is in the budget. If we reduce it by 18,000, 
that we will meet the fiscal year 25 obligations um, based on our increases over the years. Um, so those are some of the minor adjustments we've made. Um, some of the capital reserve, and this is for more public consumption than anything else. Some of the capital reserve recommendations we're making is that we, from our named projects account, that we put 40, $45,000 towards a youth and family 14 seat van. And then an additional 15,000 will come from the YFS income fund, which now has over a hundred thousand dollars in it. Um, we figure it's about a $60,000 purchase. I would, I'm very much in favor of this. They're driving old uh, vehicles. I'd rather put them in a new vehicle that will serve them well for the next 10 to 15 years. They are transporting kids, young kids. And um, I wanna make sure that the van is easy to drive and safe to drive. Um, so we're looking into that for youth and family to see if we can locate something. Uh, you heard Ray talk about cameras installed at the park and rec locations. And you've heard, these are a lot of Ray's requests. Um, and I won't go through every one of them. Um, and you see our capital below that on page five under capital expenditures. Uh, a lot of that remains the same. Um, and then we, I had Leanne <laughs> take a crack at the mill rate. Uh, you know, if your house went up 40%, you can see the difference. Uh, someone like myself, my house went up about 45%. Um, normally with a 2.3 increase, I would probably pay another $150 a year. My guess is that I'm probably going to pay $500 a year more next year. Um, I think there's a good chance at that at my house. Um so, you know, with the way we do the budget now, with the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance, I feel that there's a lot of discussion, a lot of budget development between both boards. Um, I love the process, to be honest with you. I think it's um, really um, helpful for everybody and very inclusive. Um, I think the budget is reasonable given an inflationary period that we're in. I really do. Um, and I'm open. Let's have discussion um, or comments. Great. Um, I'll, I'll jump in first. Uh, I mean, Carl, thank you. Um, and Leanne, thank you very much for um, the process. It's really helpful, you know, as somebody that doesn't get to sit here and do it every day to be able to follow through over the last several weeks and understand uh, thought process, understand what the department heads are thinking as they're approaching their budgets um, and being able to put something together and really feel like you have a good, a good sense of um, things. And I think that it makes a lot of sense in terms of how we're managing things, how we're um, preparing for you know some of the some of the projects that are coming down the pike. Oh, um, can I? And, sorry. Okay, yeah, go ahead. no, you, and, you, and you, I was no. gonna say just kind of finishing my thought. No major, no major uh, questions or criticisms, but some more more long range thoughts. Yep. Um, but you wanted to say something, Carl? So no, no, I'm gonna let you finish. I'm gonna let you finish. Okay. Um, so I know that we have a separate budget item to talk about the um, the park and rec plan, but it connects to this. So, and maybe this is for Leanne first. I'm wondering at this point, I know that we're talking about a phased approach to this. If we were to do a more direct approach of moving park and rec revenue directly into their sinking fund instead of a, a phased, you know, it's... It's a hundred thousand dollar, hundred and fifty thousand dollar difference, roughly, um, if I have the number right. How how much of an impact does that make to the mill rate? Um, I'd have to get my spreadsheet, yeah. but um, <laughs> Carl, you usually do that in you usually do that in your head. But what is one hundred and fifty thousand? Yeah, so you know, over the years, uh. I would say at this point, probably a quarter of a million is a tenth of a mil. So uh, you're right, Matt, doing about another 150, I would say, would add, uh, if the mill rate is going to be 15.1, it might be 15.6, um, maybe 6, something like that. So 
Um, yeah, the question. Like about two I'm going to let you finish. I don't want to keep interrupting. Yeah, no, no, no. That's that, that's fine. Feel free at any point to like make comments or no. you know answer questions. I mean, because this is this is not like um, like I think we should do this and do that, you know, on its head. But I've brought up for the last several years during kind of this meeting, you know, and during the park and rec presentation, the desire for us to be thinking and making moves. So I'm I you know I'm supportive of this move of more directly putting funds into the park and rec sinking fund so that we are preparing for what we expect and know to be some really large capital improvements and i think investing in our park and recreation facilities is a great you know a great tool to keep people here for economic development for just what everybody pays our tax you know pays their taxes for to invest in the community so i'm just thinking about it in terms of why we're not shifting more funds there so we can start to build that up quicker yeah and again i hate when people interrupt so i'm going to you yeah. know i want to continue yeah. so so that's that's one thought let me go let me go to the next piece um you know a clarification so i'm looking the tr I, I see the tree warden budget and um we i feel like i also bring up the same things every year so talking about trees going to the sh save our shade presentation a couple of weeks ago and then listening to the uh planning commission natural hazard mitigation plan this week you know seeing all of the the overlap you know tree care and planting is part of the recommended steps for the natural natural hazard mitigation plan um, and we're working on an update from the plan in 2019 which is several years ago i was just trying to tell what what is the line item for the tree warden versus what are the funds that we actually have available for treatment for planting um because i do think it's helpful for us to have a goal um you know from the arbor day foundation saying you know it's it's two dollars per resident starts to give you a budget that is is healthy for a community in terms of its tree care and, and i understand we've talked about this with blending it with um you know to our earlier conversation with uh invasive management as well so i was just trying to get a better sense of how much we have to actually do work versus pay our tree water so i think we have in the tree budget about forty five thousand. I'm, I'm that's off my recollection um the tree warden gets paid about eight grand okay all right, so um, so the tree warden else, line is inclusive of both. It okay, there, there's like I, without Leanne's looking for it, I know. Um, but go ahead, Leanne. Do you have it? You're on mute. You're on mute. I got it. Uh, so the the uh, tree warden bu budget is fifty seven thousand. The tree warden is paid nine thousand five hundred. Um, the vegetation management account is 71250 um so we have quite a bit of money there so that, does that answer your question in terms yes. of um, funding that's yes so that Matt, helps. thank you very much uh, Matt, i want to add on so we uh, several years ago as you know combined the dpw tree line item mm -hmm. with town tree line item and that's what i built that i mean i i shouldn't say i we as a board yep. Built that tree budget up quite a bit because it was like ten thousand back in the day, and we built it up because there were so many dead and diseased trees around town that needed to be taken down. And of course, I do plant about eight to ten trees. I try to. I try to find locations for ten to twelve trees a year. So we can. We I would say can dedicate if we wanted to. $20,000 to become an Arbor, Arbor Town. I have no doubt in my mind that we could do that. Um, and I'll t one of the reasons why is we are in very good shape with our dead and diseased trees. I don't get a lot of calls anymore. I used to get mm -hmm. calls all the time for trees all over town. And we, we used to put it out to bid because we had so many that had to come down. And I don't do that every, anymore because I don't have a list anymore. I feel like we're in pretty good shape. And in fact, I'm pruning more trees now than I ever, I, I hate to say, I, the town is pruning more trees than we ever have in the past because there's a little flexibility there because we're not taking as many trees down. 
So do I think 20,000 in the budget? If someone wanted to promote that initiative? Yes, I do. Great. And it's great to hear what, what activities that we have going on there. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's interesting because we're talking about trees on one side and then, you know, it's also part of, we're a coastal town. And so when you are thinking about natural hazard mitigation that we need to do, whether it's storms like this, storms like we had back in January with the flooding or, you know, the bigger, the bigger summer coastal storms that people might think of, um, it's all, all connected. Um, so just two, two other thoughts um, that I have, uh, actually three. And they're all, they're all some slight additions. So one, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about at the ARPA task force um, working group level about housing and what efforts we can make for, a, you know, additional housing for, um, you know, workforce housing, um, senior housing, housing for young families um, so that they can, you know, get into Old Saybrook as we try to create some, you know, turnover in the stock that we have because we have a li limited housing stock. You know, I, I think it's really important that we um, start to take some action in the next year. And I think that it would, you know, make sense for us to put a line item into the budget for a small amount to give a I hope that we can move towards in the next fiscal year appointing a housing working group. I don't know if it's a it's a formal board or if it's a task force like we have with ARPA, but to put five hundred dollars into the budget so that they have the ability to do some actual work, um, and it allows us as well then to re-examine this as part of the annual budget process. But when you when you look at our enrollment, um, you know mm. when you look at just in the schools, when you look at the the amount of real estate that we actually have available, I think that we and and also some of the great position we have as we as we look at what could come from the Mariners Way study that we've been working on, I think it makes sense to have a body. And the best thing to do is to empower them with a little bit of money and a mechanism for us to have a continued conversation at the board of finance level and and board of selectmen level strategically about this in, in the next year's budget as well. So that's a recommendation. And then I brought this up last year, just another point, I think, you know, and again, it's the timing of things, attending the, the planning commission um, meeting remotely and listening to the natural hazard mitigation plan. It is, there's a lot of activities on there um, and we're not gonna solve it with the town budget by itself. But I think a critical piece is making sure that we have resources put aside in an off budget way um, for to actually undertake some of the engineering work that needs to be done to examine projects uh, and come up with the actual capital plan and the project plans, um, the construction plans, so that we can be as shovel ready as possible to take advantage of state um, and federal grant opportunities or build in you know, once we understand the scope of a project, uh, we can actually build that into our own town, you know, capital plan. So I, I think having a dedicated um, natural hazard mitigation um, engineering line item, again, if, if, if we have, the, I know we have a, an engineering line item um, that is, that we, you, you know, put forward the last two years, so we can get you know, more shovel ready for grants, but I think that we need to have something that's dedicated to thinking as a coastal community about the climate resiliency work that we're gonna need to undertake. Okay. So th those are my thoughts. Okay. Um, so I, I know um, uh, Bruce Carlson has also brought up the housing working group and um, I haven't taken a deep dive into that yet. I just haven't. I will. Um, and I do think it's important enough. Um, I, I don't want to be redundant of any other, obviously, um, budget line items. I don't think, I don't necessarily think that would be, um, uh, 
So you're proposing a line item, perhaps in the political subdivisions. I, I mean, that's probably the place. Yeah, I, th I think that that would be the right place. Put it. Um, that's. I mean, that's. Fine. I have no. I have no particular issue with that. Um, I don't know, Scott. Any comment on that? Um, I don't have any comment on that. I think that that uh, it's forward thinking, and it's one of those things that. Uh, we we are going to be addressing at some point, and so I, I'm not averse to doing that at, at any point in the near future. I appreciate the uh, the suggestion. We are going to, I mean, we definitely are going to be very aggressive, Matt, as you know, um, mm -hmm. as much as we can with Mariner's Way. And I, I don't know what the opportunities for housing are, are out there exactly. Um, and if they're not out there, I'm not sure where they are. Um, it just seems like the town is so... There's a lot of open space and there's a lot of infill. Um, so that's difficult. With regard to your natural hazard mitigation, what are you suggesting? I'm not sure what you're suggesting there. I think it would be tough within the budget. I think that it probably is something if there is a willingness to, to create an extra off budget account that's focused in this way that we look to do that with some of our surplus funds at the end of the year, because we really don't budget at this point into the off budget accounts. Um, well, I think that that, I think that that makes more sense. Okay. Um, so why don't we, why don't we take a look? Uh, we could do that with surplus funding um, because Look, I'm, I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward with the interest we're earning, even though we're projecting some of that interest into fiscal year 25, we're still going to have a surplus uh, on revenue. Anyway, I'll just mm -hmm. say, uh, I mean, Leanne, is that that's a pretty relatively safe assumption that our revenue forecast is going to be in surplus. And we, we have already met our state uh, goals for budget. We've already exceeded our um, local revenue goals, primarily due to the interest income that we've received, and we will continue. Um, I, I and I'm sure that, as t usual, that we do meet our um, tax tax goals as well. So uh, we'll, we'll definitely have a, a sur uh, revenue surplus for this year. So um, why don't we uh, take your suggestion, Matt? And um, assuming there are surplus funds to put into off budget accounts after we meet our rainy day fund funding. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we could take a stab at that and, you know, depending if it's a significant amount, maybe we can look at 50,000 for instance, because that is a pretty good head start to mm -hmm. something, but you know, our, our surplus was quite significant last year. And I think 50,000 would have been relatively easy. And if it's something like that, I think it would be easy again this year. Great, so, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, and it it's listen, engineer. The soft costs are what kill you. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that's that is definitely what does it. So, and, right. and without the and without the soft costs, we also don't know the full scope and cost of a project. So it makes it harder to plan into our capital. Yeah, plan. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, Liam. Uh, okay. So, Matt, you're gonna make. I'll let you make a motion on the housing. So I'll make a motion, a motion to uh, to include a line item under the political subdivisions for five hundred dollars for housing working group. That's fine. I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. All those right. in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. So that's added. Uh, all right, Matt. Anything else? Did you? That's it. Thank you uh scotty all right well so my my comment is that i have been a part of this process with you for the last 13 years um i served with parks and rec for eight years prior to that and we were also part of that budget process and i've been to these budget meetings in town since i lived here in 93 so i appreciate all that goes into the process um the time and effort spent the the analysis analyses that are uh, included the work with key stakeholders. I think it's a very inclusive and comprehensive process. I think it's wide open and it's easily followed. And, and I think that anybody that wants to know about what we do and how we do it um, has access to that information. So I'm proud of the process and uh, 
And I'm pleased that we continually suggest a budget that seems to be fair uh, and it's conscientious with regard to what the taxpayers will have to pay. And it also provides the services that people have come to expect and uh, and desire here as a part of our quality of life. So thank you very much for the inclusive process. Yeah, it's been, it's been good. And, and thank you for being part of town government for so long. It's amazing. I think longer, certainly longer than me. Um, so yeah, as part of this budget discussion, I do want to reference the park and rec memo mm -hmm. and Matt, your comments. You know, I talked to Ray yesterday. I informed Ray and Susan Esty, the chairperson of the park and rec commission, that we were uh, going to peel off this amount of money towards park and rec. And with the $2 mini golf fee, they're going to be putting about $180,000 a year, which is so, I mean, that's a it's it's a good chunk of change for an organization that was scrapping for funding, you know, three years ago, right? So uh I am I'm I, I I am on board in spirit with you, you know, I truly am. Uh uh my inclination, I you know, Leanne knows how I, I, I think sometimes. And many times I'm like, let's just bite the bullet, let's just do it and be done with it. And that way we don't have to think about it again. Um, let's leave this conversation to the Board of Finance at this point and see what their appetite is. Let's, I'm, in, I'm inclined to vote for the 100,000. Um, at the Board of Finance discussions, um, I will mention that this discussion occurred and that maybe we wanna bite off another 100 and throw it into the budget assuming that there aren't significant changes that the board of finance is going to make. I would be, I'm not inclined to, well, let me say it this way. I'm inclined to think that way, Matt, also, mm -hmm. because, you know, if they were to have 200,000 plus or $2 mini golf fees, you're, you're really talking about knocking off million dollar projects that by the time you plan it, you have the money. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know? So exactly. Yeah. Um, and I, and I'm very I'm very happy to see this proposal come forward, Carl. Yeah. And I, I want to thank you and Leanne for bringing yeah. it forward because we've talked about this the last several years, and I think this does position Park and Rec to really, it sure to really do just that. It sure does. And um, you know that the town park project, if if you know we can get a head start on that, and of course uh, there may be some other exciting things that come for Park and Rec shortly. So uh, yes, I. I think we all realize that they're a big driver of uh, families to our community. And by the way, all ages. I mean, whether, mm -hmm. you know, we all enjoy park and rec facilities. So, all right. Uh, if there's no further discussion at this point, um, and I'm going to ask if there is further discussion other than what's already been proposed and discussed, is there any other, anything else? Well, may I just ask, the only yeah. proposal is the $500, correct? Yeah. That is correct. All right. Is that correct? Yes. Or? That's the Yep. Okay. You got that, Leanne? I do. So the new budget amount is uh fifty one million four four zero zero four three. So that would be the vote okay. for the, the um okay. board of selectmen. And I will move that. Is there a second? Oh I'll move well, okay, wait, hold on a second. So we already did this. So I will um move the amended budget uh make a motion to amend the budget to the amount as uh, stated by the finance director second i'll second so this is seconded for the amendment um all those in favor signify by saying aye aye and then i think we should just vote now on the entirety of the budget piece that was just Correct. expenditure side so we'll move the entire budget with that new number is there a second second all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. I want to thank you both for your input. Um, truly appreciate it. And I appreciate the time you spend, uh, the extra time, the extra meeting Saturday. Um, and Matt, I know you're attending some other meetings too, which is good for you. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, so, all right. Uh, the tax sale policy, did you guys get a chance to look at that? Yeah. Yep. Um, Uh, again, this was, um, oh, and by the way, 
before we get to that. Tomorrow, uh, I'm going to, if you guys could have an opportunity to sign the call of the town meeting. Yep. So um, just let me know when you can stop by. I'll remind you and uh, I'll make sure I should be. Hold on one second tomorrow. Let me just make sure my schedule. Just text me. Uh, Georgianne is out uh, for, until she. this is the time she takes her vacation every year. Okay. So I, I will be in the office all day tomorrow. So if you guys uh, have a moment to stop by at any time, morning or later in the day, or I can come to you and get the call signed. OK, um, yeah. so the tax sale policy, um, do you guys get a chance to look at that? Yes. Matt, did yes. You have a My only question, is this a new policy or is this updated policy? Um, I think I just changed like, you know, sewers to, uh, uh, you know what? I don't know why I'm not finding it in front of me. It's not, no, it's not new. It it's is, not a new policy. Okay. So this new, is, this other is than what we're we, amending an existing. Okay. Yeah. But it, like my, in a very minor way, like, you know, I just, some of the language was not um, for old Saybrook. It, you know, so, um, and this of course comes from our tax collector, just so that we have more of a policy when we talk about tax foreclosures, yep. as opposed to, it being solely in the discretion of the chief administrative official. Um, right. We talked about this yeah. a couple of months back now. Yeah. So um, it's a policy. It can be amended. If we see something wrong with it, we can amend mm -hmm. it. It's not, you know, nothing's written in stone. It just helps us have a baseline to move forward. I'll make a motion to adopt the Town of Old Saybrook tax sale policy as presented. I'll second it. Okay, seconded by Scott. Um, further comment? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, building permit fee, uh, return Trinity Solar for the two properties. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Uh, lastly, uh, Dave Sparrow uh, chose not to um, continue on the Pension and Employee Benefits Board. Matt, do you know Leland McKenna? You, I feel, feel like you must. I don't. I was actually su surprised that I don't. Uh, he's a uh, Leland. We're very, actually, quite frankly, I think we're lucky to get a guy like him. Uh, mm -hmm. Younger guy, he's probably, I'd say, you know, certainly around 40 years old. He is, um, well, you, did you get his? Uh, yep. Yeah, George yes. Ann sent it over. Yep. He, he's, he's very um, established at Middlesex Hospital. Um, I've met him several times. I, I, his, um, I see his wife at the gym quite a bit. Uh, Victoria, they have several children and uh, really smart guy. Actually, when Dave decided not to uh, serve further, I talked to the chairman of the Pension Benefits Board, and uh, that is Daryl Pataska. Uh, and Daryl knows Leland. And he said, you know who would be really great, I think, if we can get him is Leland. And I I initially said, I don't think Leland would have the time for this. And um, and I he asked him, and Leland said he would be interested in doing it. And I think he's going to be a huge ad to the pension board, which is already, as you guys have heard me say over and over again, it is just an excellent board of um, folks. And I think Leanne would agree with that. Um, um, and this is um, a good appointment because it's a younger appointment too. So someone like this, if they would be willing to serve, you know, one or two terms, it adds a lot of stability because there may be some folks on there right now who are not going to go another one or two terms. Um, so um, I think Leland would be a real, it's a real get for the town in my opinion. Um, so I'm going to move Leland's uh, appointment. Second. Then by Scott, any further comment on that? And again, Matt, I, I, I he's got to be your age. Yeah. 
No, it looks like we're, yeah. If you don't mind me asking, how old are you? 41. 41, yeah. Um, so um, anyway, if he does become a little bit more involved and we're all at a similar event, I will make sure to introduce you. So Great. Um, all right. Uh, hearing no discussion or no further, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. That, I think, I didn't miss anything on the agenda. Did I? I don't think I did. No. All right. Not at all. All right. Thank you both. Uh, enjoy your snow day. Uh, all right. We'll head into another meeting. And thank you, Leanne. Thank you, Leanne. And, thank you, Leanne. Uh, talk to you guys very soon. I'll be in touch with you tomorrow about signing the call. Sounds okay. good. Okay. Thanks, everybody. A motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. What second? Second. Aye. Bye. Aye.